Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 13.1 excretion in humans. As always we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 13.1 you need to identify the roles of the lungs and kidneys in excretion and identify the structures of the urinary system. For extended you also need to identify the structure of a kidney, describe the structure and function of a nephron and and describe the role of the liver in the assimilation and deamination of amino acids. Many of the chemical reactions that take place in cells release toxic byproducts that can disrupt the normal functioning of the organism and cause damage if allowed to accumulate. Excretion can be defined as the removal of waste products of metabolism and substances in excess of requirements. Some of the organs involved in excretion are the lungs, kidneys and liver. The lungs are responsible for excreting carbon dioxide, a byproduct of respiration. Carbon dioxide is transported in the bloodstream from the respiring tissues to the capillaries in the lungs. It then diffuses into the alveoli so that it can be exhaled. The kidneys are responsible for excreting a toxic substance called urea, as well as excess water and ions taken in with the diet. They're located either side of the spine and filter the blood, removing all of the urea and some of the water and ions. These substances are transported to the bladder in the form of urine through tubes called ureters. Urine is stored in the bladder and excreted through another tube called the urethra. Okay, so that's everything for core, so we'll move on now to the extended content, beginning with the structure and function of a kidney. The outer region of the kidney is called the cortex, and the inner zone is called the medulla. The tissue consists of many tiny structures called nephrons. A single nephron is made of a coiled knot of capillaries called a glomerulus, a cup-shaped organ called a renal capsule, a looping renal tubule, and a collecting duct. As blood flows into the narrow capillaries of a glomerulus, pressure increases, forcing some of its contents outwards through the thin capillary walls. This solution is known as filtrate and contains water, glucose, urea, and ions. The process of removing these substances from the blood is called filtration. The filtrate from the glomerulus collects in the renal capsule and passes down the convoluted renal tubule. As it does this, some of the substances that the body needs move from the filtrate and back into the blood Blood in the capillaries. All the glucose is reabsorbed first, followed by most of the water. Some of the ions are also taken back to maintain the correct concentrations in the blood. What remains of the filtrate is called urine, which contains the excess water and ions, and urea, none of which was reabsorbed. The urine passes down the collecting duct and through the ureters to the bladder. Next, you need to know about the role of the liver. Assimilation is the uptake and use of nutrients by cells. The liver plays an important role in assimilation as it removes amino acids from the bloodstream and uses them to synthesize proteins. Unlike carbohydrates and fats, excess amino acids cannot be stored, so they're either converted to glucose or broken down by the liver in a process called deamination. Deamination is the removal of the nitrogen-containing part of amino acids to form urea, which passes into the bloodstream and is filtered out by the kidneys. It's important that urea is excreted in this way as it can be extremely poisonous if allowed to accumulate. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 13.1, excretion in humans. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your subscription and I'll see you next time for topic 14.1, coordination and response.